What's happening, everybody? Thank y'all for coming out. I really appreciate it. So let's just get right into it. People of Montana, hear me and hear me well. Tonight, you're going to see something that you've never seen before. You're going to see a black man do some amazing shit. And then immediately after that, you're going to see another black man do some amazing shit. I know. It's two black men in a row. You're basically in a Kardashian's bedroom right now. So, I just want to get something out the way real quick. Um, I want to talk about the name of this show, Summer Snickers. Um, who's what came up with that? I mean, I'm not trying to go, I'm just saying, I mean, you, got, you got two black men in a show with the word Snickers in it. That, that sounds too similar to a word that I'm sure behind closed doors, some of you all have to say a whole lot. living in Montana for three years now, but I actually have a very rich Montana history. Would you guys like to hear some Montana history tonight? <laughs> awesome, awesome. So let me start by saying that my family makes up the entire black population of Montana. <laughs> I have eight brothers and two sisters. And out of all the women that my dad had children with, my mom is the only one that's black, which means that I have the darkest complexion out of all of my siblings. And when you go down the line, it gets significantly lighter and lighter and lighter. To the point, to the point, I'm not bullshitting, to the point where my youngest brother, if you were to look at him, you would think that he was 100% white. Like seriously, if you saw him right now, you would think that you're looking at a white dude, but you're not. He's, he's not white. And that's how you know when a black man is getting too much white pussy, when his sperm runs out of nothing. <laughs> Speaking of my dad, so believe it or not, my dad was a pimp. And when I say that he was a pimp, I'm not talking in slang terms like, oh, he was a cool dude. No, I mean whores <laughs> gave my dad money after having filthy, disgusting sex with the Montana Police Department. <laughs> and this was back in the 70s, so I think it was the Mounted Police. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I was told, you guys didn't get roads until like 1987. <laughs> My daddy's hoes fucked on horseback. <laughs> when they were finished, they hop up the horse. And they gave my dad a big sack of money with a dollar sign painted on the side of it. <laughs> and he took that bag of money and put it in his Wells Fargo stagecoach and tried it. <laughs> So, uh, round of applause. Anybody in here that's married, round of applause. So, I'm married to. I've been married for almost a year now, and at the top of the year, back in February, my wife almost died. She got really, really sick. Like, she had an asthma attack, and then we found out later that not only did she have pneumonia, but she also had sepsis. And it was really bad. Like, I had to call an ambulance, rush to the hospital. She ended up being in the hospital for nine days. But she made a full recovery. She's here today now. She perfectly well. You guys have no idea how relieved I was when she pulled through because my wife is white and everybody would have thought I killed her. <laughs> Because of that, like, I hope my wife never goes missing. <laughs> that 
would be the worst, most awkward phone call I've ever had to make in my life. Like, yeah, officer, uh, yeah, I think I need to file a missing persons report. Uh, I think my wife is missing. Describe her? Well, she's five feet, 175 pounds, and she's white. Describe myself? Um, five foot 10, 205 pounds, and I'm black. How did you guys get here so fast, and why am I getting here? Alright, now round of applause, everybody. Anybody that has kids, children. That's good, that's good. I really like kids. Well, let me rephrase that. I really like babies. Babies are a lot easier to relate to than kids are. And the reason why is because when a baby shits on you, they don't really know what they're doing. Like, it's nothing personal. They just shit on you. That's what they do. But kids, when they get older and develop personalities, they intentionally and consistently shit on you with their shitty life choices. I'm going to get a nose ring. I'm going to get a tattoo on my forehead so I'll never get a job. I'm going to date outside of my race.
curse in front of my mom in regular situations. Because my mom is from Jamaica. Caribbean moms are the strictest moms in the world. So even today, at 38 years old, if I was to curse in front of my mom, I'd get in trouble. But when I'm on stage, the rules don't apply, so I take full advantage of putting the most vulgar, profane, disgusting, dirty word combinations together, like pussy fart and, <laughs> and motherfucker and, 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 and Harvey Weinstein. now because I, I now know that she's 100% safe because not too long ago, about a year ago, she was dating a white guy and that really worried me. Now, I'm not trying to sound fucked up, but the guy that she was dating, and it's funny because Gary mentioned him earlier, the guy that she was dating looked like Scott Peterson. Now, before you think that sounds fucked up, let me just throw a disclaimer out there. I think all white men look like Scott Peterson. <laughs> Now, I'll never forget when she first told me she was dating him. I hadn't talked to him in a while. And I was like, so what's new? And she was like, oh, um, John and I are dating now. I said, you're dating John? I thought he was married. She goes, he was married. He left his wife. I said, where did he leave his wife? And if you think that's fucked up, let me throw another disclaimer out and just say, I think all white men murder their wives when they don't want to be married anymore. <laughs> Love you, Mom. <laughs> so, um, I had to pay my rent a few days ago. Every time I pay my rent, I regret not becoming a hitman. <laughs> I know that sounds far-fetched, but I actually almost became one, seriously. When I was in college, the CIA actually recruited me. But see, they used code words. They said the job was fixing computers, but I'm not stupid. I know what fixing the computers is. <laughs> and I would have been traveling to exotic cities like London, Paris, Cairo, Egypt, just fucking people up legally. But I chose not to take the job because I did not want to miss the opportunity of following my dreams to tell jokes in Billings. <laughs> did some research, and I discovered that I can actually live out my hitman fantasy right here. I actually learned that I could legally go around and fuck people up, and I would never get charged with any crime. And even if I did, the charges would eventually get dropped, no matter what it was. I just had to figure out the cool words. In Montana, y'all call those people radio DJs. <laughs> Aren't you afraid that 
a gay guy's gonna hit on you? I'm like, oh my God, dude, shut the fuck up. A gay guy's not gonna hit on me just because I'm a guy. That's not how it works, dude. They have preferences just like we do. And that made me realize something. <laughs> Every time I've been in the loft, a gay guy has not hit on me. <laughs> Here's a gift certificate to the PBR. Oh! 